before Ice-T wifed up a then 20 year old swimsuit model working under the name Coco, before Ice-T took home a Grammy and released 13 studio albums. You the fool. Yo homeboy, you a fool. You don't know what time it is out here messing up your mind, you know what I'm saying? This next record is dedicated to some personal friends of mine. The LAPD. Before beefing with LL Cool J, Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, and Soldier Boy. So I apologize, Soldier Boy, for telling you to eat a dick. That was just in anger. But as far as your music goes, it's garbage. Before Ice T's 1992 track, Cop Killer would stir up for him a whole lot of controversy. Before Ice-T would then go on to portray a cop on Law and & Order for 16 years. Captain, he's a kid and she's kinda hot, plus she got him whacked out on drugs. Ice-T was an only child born in New Jersey, but both his parents, they passed away tragically when he was a youth. Then his life was uprooted and he was moved to South Central Los Angeles. While enrolled in high school, he stayed away as best he could from gang culture, but eventually he would start dealing drugs as well as committing robberies. After the birth of his first daughter, he decided to join the military, but in the back of his mind, what he wanted to do was make music. But breaking into the entertainment industry, it can be a tough nut to crack. And Ice-T has since stated that during this time, he went on to rob banks. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCredna and welcome to Before They're Famous, documenting the life and career of Ice-T prior to fame, here for you on Before They're Famous. Now you guys requested this video and my job is to keep you happy, so be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. Do you feel there are any good cops? There's a lot of good cops out there, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of police officers that are out there trying to do the right thing. Ice-T was born in Newark, New Jersey under the name Tracy Lauren Marrow to his parents Alice and Solomon. His father worked as a conveyor belt mechanic. Due to Ice-T's heritage, his father was African American, his mother was Creole. He experienced the racial tensions he would later rap about early on in his career. He has since stated in his memoir while he was growing up in New Jersey, he would often witness the wrath of racism faced on the other black students, but he himself, well he would be overlooked because of his light skin. Also because even as a little kid, he was probably someone no one wanted to mess with. First spit that lollipop out before I smack it out your mouth. You're not a five-year-old. And it's damn me in jail. You only sucking on something else. At the age of eight, Ice-T lost his mother to a heart attack, and four short years later, his father would pass away the same way. An orphan by the age of 12, he was then shipped across country to live with his aunt to a city that would shape his career and his music. I'm talking about Los Angeles. Once in LA, he attended Crenshaw High, an almost entirely black school, which by the mid 70s was infiltrated with gangs. When you got to that school, it was kind of like you either with us or without us. And everybody from my neighborhood or down in South Central Los Angeles is affiliated with gangs. But I used to roll with the sets and I know what makes them tick. Now Ice-T has since gone on to state that he did his best to stay away from the gang culture. He didn't get involved with the Bloods, a little bit with the Crips. What he was best known for was reciting the works of a pimp turned author by the name of Iceberg Slim. So much so that his peers in high school, they dubbed him Ice-T. Which is a way better origin story than him just really enjoying one cool refreshing beverage. Now throughout high school, Ice-T refrained from drinking or drug use, but eventually he began to get involved in gang culture. He also made his first leap into the music industry, forming a group known as the Precious Few of Crenshaw High, and they would put on live shows. But by the time he finished high school, he had a girlfriend and a baby to support, and to do this, well, he would sell weed and rob car stereos. On top of this, he also stole a rug. A rug he got caught stealing. Must have been a good rug, must have been like a Persian rug. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? With no job or money and Ice-T going down a bad path, he decided to join the Army, the 25th Infantry Division, out of desperation. There Ice-T served as a squad leader to his barracks while being stationed out in Hawaii. But while there, he kept getting himself a little distracted. He got his hands on a set of turntables, he also started mixing, he was also working on his lyrical style, and the people in the barracks were like, yo dude, this is the military. You want to be a rapper, you should probably go do that. After being listed for four years, he received an honorable discharge and went on to spend the early 80s building his DJ skills. But this also opened up doors for him as an actor and he appeared in Breakin' and Breakin' 2 Electro Boogaloo. What is people in the place to be? This is what you paid your money to see. Now this is a pretty fantastic start for his career. But Ice-T has since admitted that, well during this time, money was tight and uh, well he resorted to robbing banks to pay the bills. 
No joke. That's right, and thanks to American Statue of Limitation law, Ice-T can now freely tell those stories. He even went on to state that his army training, it made him even better at the gig. Instead of him and his buddies just going after the drawers, they would go straight for the safe. Yeah, this glass of iced tea has got two giant ice cubes in it. By 1987, Ice T had signed with Sire Records, and his debut album, Bribe Pays, went gold. That year, Ice T also wrote the theme song to the Dennis Hopper's film, Colors, a movie about gang violence in South Central starring two white guys. A year later, Ice dropped his second album known as Power, and the next year, well, he would set up his own label known as Rhyme Syndicate. With them, he would drop his third album. The Iceberg Freedom of Speech, Just Watch What You Say, which mainly focuses on his experience with censorship in the United States. By the time 1991 rolled around, Ice T had managed to shape the genre of gangster rap for the next decade, while simultaneously touring at Lollapalooza. On top of this, he had the side project of a heavy metal band known as Body Count. On top of all this, he was also focusing on his acting career appearing in New Jack City, and then he dropped his fourth studio album, this one, Original Gangster, which became the first rap album to ever have a parental advisory sticker. But that didn't stop it from reaching number 15 on the Billboard Top 200 and selling half a million copies. His work on Quincy Jones' album Back on the Block would earn him a Grammy. Now, it would take another decade for him to meet his future wife, a woman by the name of Coco. He met her on a music video shoot, and she went on to state, I'm looking for a nice guy. And his words were, well, if you just add N to my name, well, I'm nice T. And the rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is before they're famous. So all you fools sitting in here and going to ask me, and you know exactly why there's gangs and drugs, because you don't care about it. My name is Mike McCrath. Thanks for checking out my personal channel. I do all sorts of celebrity bios. We just did Ice Cube, and that did really well. So I said, hey, let's follow it up with Ice-T. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want to hear about next. I've done all sorts of rappers, actors, comedians, porn stars, and maybe I'll do one on Coco. You guys want to see that? Let me know down below. The song I'm your pusher is basically, I turned the word pusher instead of me selling dope. I sell dope music. In other words, music so good it gets you high.